Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Bennett here, and I want to talk to you now about something that's called ontological reasoning. Now, what this has to do with this is a very important idea that has to do with how you go about thinking and learning. So what exactly is an ontology? An ontology is a formal, explicit specification of a shared conceptualization. Now that's a mouthful, and what exactly does that mean? Well, think about the first programming language that you had a couple of years ago, whenever. When you learned that language, let's say it was programming language C, you probably struggled with that language, and you had to figure out the if-then statements, how to do loop structures, how to do input-output, maybe module design, and things like that. Well, somehow you managed to get through it, and you moved on to your second programming language class. Well, let's say your second programming language class uh, happened to have been Java. Well, going into the class, you found it wasn't as difficult because you were able to recognize things like uh, conditional structures, like if-then, loop structures, for loop, while loops, and so forth. So you already knew those concepts, and so you just had to learn the syntax for the Java language. Now, that's an example using analogy. Say, well, it's like this, and it's like this over here in this other language. Ontological reasoning involves identifying, let's say, the properties of a programming language that says, okay, it's got loop structures, conditional structures, for example, input-output, maybe module designs, procedures, functions, and so forth. So mentally, you, you do this categorization and description, and ontological reasoning is the ability maybe to do it a little bit more formally. But this is exactly what you've done when you learned a programming language. Now, over the maybe years, what happened, you learned Fortran, you learned Pascal, you learned Java, C, C++, and you put them in this large category. Well, along comes a new language such as uh, Prolog, Lisp, or RPG, Report Program Generator, and it's like those languages don't fit in this category over here. So then you have to redefine your whole paradigm, and you might have something like procedural languages where you put the C in Java and so forth, and over here you'd have your non-procedural languages like Lisp, Prolog, and RPG. So it's a, in a continuously evolving process. Now the reason I mention that is because we've just looked at ER and EER types of diagrams. Well, we're going to be talking about doing UML types of diagrams. And what I want you to do is focus on the way we've expressed things in EER types of diagrams and see how you do that in UML. So what you'll find is, oh, we have a way of representing entities, like with classes, for example, or relationships, and in terms of the cardinality with multiplicity and so forth. So what you'll find is you, you, you want to focus on the expressibility in UML, and you'll find, oh, it's really not that much to learn because you've already seen the ideas. Now it's just a matter of learning how do you, you do a little symbolic representation. So that's an important idea to pay attention to, ontological reasoning, and keep that in mind not only for this particular unit, but in other units and also your other studies. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.